look at me at the Home Depot. So this brings up a very unique situation as a home inspector. Do we fix things? No. Are we supposed to fix things? No. But what happens is, is homeowners that don't know how to do like general maintenance around their home because there's such a specialty field of like, I don't know, geologist of, I don't know, it doesn't matter. There's some sort of geologist, they know everything about soil, but they don't know how to tighten the hose knob, the, ho the little knob behind the handle, and there's a leak there now. Uh, they like to blame the home inspector for it, and yes, I can argue it, and I can say, that's not us, that's just a general maintenance thing, and give them instructions on how to fix it, or I can go out there myself, just tighten a little knob, say thank you, and win the listing agent too as well in the future, showing that we tackle even the nominal complaints and make the transaction just run a little bit smoother. All right, let's go fix this leaky hose bit. Hey everybody, it's that time of the week to announce the winner of the last giveaway. And this time we're giving away the Crocs, so let's see who won. All right, everybody, we had about 18 people enter, so thank you everybody for entering. Let's go ahead and see who won. All right, and the winner is Kyle Kelly. So you can go ahead and email us at info at aactionhouston.com or you can message us on Instagram or Facebook and we'll get the Crocs mailed out to you. Thanks so much, everybody. So the things I picked up, I uh, they were upset about a splitter too. I don't know if the splitter was broken, so I'll just replace the splitter. I picked up tape just in case the job will require some tape and I'll probably add some tape in there just to prevent any future leaks and then also in a backup valve just in case I can't repair the other one because you literally have to just uh, turn off the water unscrew it tape the connection and screw a new one on so uh, these are a repair and the total came out to $19 so this $19 of marketing expense uh, for a action so I also carry just a bunch of little tools in the back and I can show you that kit back there this uh, deco this off-brand tool kit but it comes with a little bit of everything all your just basic essentials I keep this in the back of my truck for little projects like this just in case uh, something goes wrong I can uh, repair the things I think uh, came from. This actually was gifted to me by my mother-in-law, so thank you, Barb. Okay, here with a little bit of a voiceover, here are the items in need of repair. What needed to be fixed was the packing nut in the back. It was a little loose, which causes these leaks at the handle and the faucet below. I turned it about a half a turn to, in between a quarter turn and half a turn, I documented showing that the leak stopped. I took pictures and video, obviously, of the item not leaking anymore. And then I reattached their sprinkler or their water fixture, and I saw that the threads were leaking. So I took it apart, added some plumber tape, and fixed the threads there too as well. So there you go. Nice, easy fix. I was there a total of six minutes. Okay, so all wrapped up. Took literally like 10 minutes. Everyone's happy. They turned the knob. No leaks. There was no leaks around their little makeshift garden thing. So everything's good. Everyone's happy. Situation is solved. Did I win anybody? No, but I also didn't lose anybody either as well. Well, the buyer's agent, he's been using us forever and I just, I'll let him know what I did and everything will go back the way it was, nice and smooth. Um, so why does stuff like this happen? And I can tell you the reason right now. You can already see how old that faucet is. You know, that valve, no one probably touched it for years. My inspector goes out there, turns it on, turns it off, and then that bolt gets a little loose and boom, you got a leak out of handle. So this would actually fall under failed under testing, but as a home inspector and as a business owner, you know, you're not gonna be able to calm people down just by letting them know it's a home maintenance issue. The best thing to do is just use your knowledge, 
get a wrench, go out there, take 10, 20 minutes out of your day, tighten it down, and go on to the next one. Okay, end with that rant. Let's go check out some stucco stuff. Uh, I recorded this video the other day, so it might seem out of sync a little bit, but I thought it was really important to show you. And please hit that like and subscribe button and catch us on the next one. Today, we have a stucco reinspection. So the stucco reinspection is after I already did the main stucco inspection where I found all kinds of unique problems. I guess not unique to stucco, right? Stucco always leaks, but, uh, I found water leaks, rot, balcony pan not done properly, you know, um, water intrusion through the stucco, active water leaks. I don't know how other ways I could really say that, but it was leaking, right? So now I'm back after they've done the repairs and they want to see if it's done correctly. So the pan actually looks really good on this balcony, but it's still leaking <laughs> because the door isn't done right. So water always finds a way and you need to have 100% complete because that 0.1% or that 1% will get you. Okay, so right here, the first thing that you can see is they added in kick out flashing, which is really nice. I love this pronounced kick out flashing, especially when it per uh, protrudes over four inches. That looks really good. Also, they added in the weep screed that I asked for. The EPS bands were like damaged and rotting and falling off. And I can show you the neighbor's house. It looked exactly like the neighbor's house, but you can see right here, they have a weep screed stuck in place. Coming around the corner, you can see uh, the kick out flashing on this side. Looks really good and pronounced too as well. And then you can see the pan actually goes over the EPS band all the way around right here so that's looking really nice um, let's go upstairs and i'll show you what it looks like inside and i can show you where the door is damaged and then we can look at some of the neighbors homes too so on the inside of the property i really didn't see any signs of water intrusion the the boards in front of the door actually look a little warped right there um, but my infrared camera picked up nothing and my moisture meter picked up nothing in front of this door so this damage might be old so sitting on the uh balcony with the stucco you can see that they have really nice clearance across the balcony the transition into the kick out flashing looks really nice look how smooth that is so that looks good you can see the the guardrail for the balcony is sealed up really, really nice. It's sealed around the edges of the, sealed into the home really well. They sealed all the electrical junction box. And coming to the other side here, you can see the guardrail is sealed up really nicely too. Over here, you can see the bottoms nice and sealed up. And then right here, look at this transition into the kick out flashing. I love how pronounced that is. That's four inches sticking out of the stucco. I, I'd be highly unlikely for that to leak in this location. So let's move to the problem area, which is the door. And right here, you can see the threshold and the door frame is compromised. And right here, this is the exact spot underneath where I'm getting the leak and I have an infrared scan where I can drop in the photo for you and it lines up directly in this location where water's making it underneath the pan. I thought it might have been going inside but there must be a good enough slope to that door to where it's not damaging the floor on the inside. So uh, let me go underneath and I can show you exactly where it's leaking and how you can see there's no signs of damage at all. So I just learned my lesson. <laughs> that balcony door was locked. So I had to jump from this balcony all the way down. So uh, I'm just, we're keeping that on the YouTube channel only. So on the outside, and that crack came from the previous leak to this balcony. It was leaking down, caused the stucco to bulge out, and they got a, a crack in this location. But right here, as you can see, there is no signs of water intrusion anywhere. So it's looking nice and white. And so where we had the water intrusion it was right here, right in line with the door. And you can see there is no signs of water intrusion in that corner either. So you wanna make sure that you have a really nice infrared camera if you're getting into stucco inspections or your inspector has a good infrared camera because 
I would not have caught that if, uh, if I didn't have that with me today. Okay, so let's look at the neighbor's house for a second here. Uh, they know they have stucco issues too because they saw all the work done on this home and the stucco guy was over there doing quotes. So this house right here actually looked exactly like this house and you can see the differences already from the pan. So you can see that there is no pronounced kick out flashing. You have the water lines rolling down the wall right here and then there is no pan over this EPS band. And then if you can really look, I'll try to zoom in over there, um, can't really walk on their property, but you can see the rust underneath the, uh, the EPS band there. So we know that it's, it's rotting out. There is no clearance of the stucco in the pan. So there, you need a, at least a two inch clearance from that hard surface. You need kick out flashing, you need a weep screed. There is no sealant on the, on the spindle. So that right there is one giant leaky mess. So if you see something like this as a home inspector, or if you're purchasing a property and you see this, you're gonna end up looking at negotiating repairs or recommending for an intrusive stucco and test to confirm these findings. Okay, so say you already found all those things and you can obviously tell it's leaking. You don't, you're like, you don't even need an intrusive test because you can see the water coming through the stucco. Something I learned getting into the industry is the stucco contractors will not even work on a home without an intrusive test because they don't want to be held responsible for removing the stucco and everything is fine. So they want someone to come in and give active readings or active moisture readings so they know they can go in and work on it. So I know that probably raises alarms for some inspectors because I once I was doing just a regular home inspection. It's like, hey, I don't even need to drill in this. I reach underneath and you can like grab that substrate and it was rotted out. And I was like, hey, you don't really need to get this done. And then they called the stucco contractor and he wouldn't even work on it. And so then they had to hire me out to drill into the stucco. I always just try to save people's money and, and then I ended up wasting my time. I could have just done it right then and there. But yeah, so you can see the dramatic differences over there. You can see the no two inch clearance, no kick out flashing. There's no sealant on any of the protrusions into the stucco. There's no overhead flashing on the EPS bands and the EPS bands aren't properly sloped. You have the rust color. So there's a lot going on in that stucco where you're like, hey, there's some damage here. And then you can see the after effect here. So that's a pretty cool uh, add on the video. I think I'm rambling a little bit. so. Uh, let's look at this neighbor's home so you can see the the same thing is happening over here okay so looking at this neighbor's home right here you can see that they don't have as many issues because they do have a little bitty kick out flashing right there kick out flashing on stucco you want it to protrude about four inches to really prevent any damage from happening but right here you can see the the rust color coming through this EPS band and so you know that it's not sealed up very well and water is making it behind it and it's beginning to rot. Also further back there, I'll try to zoom it in in the video, but you can really see all that water coming in through their weep screed. It is nice they have a weep screed, but whenever you have that many stains, you know that there is an excessive amount of moisture making it behind that area and weep screed can only do so much. It's meant to let a little bit of water out, but not heavy amounts of water every time it rains. So you can see, you can find out a lot just from looking at the neighbor's home too. All right, one more last thing. So why did I say you can find out a lot by looking at the neighbor's home? There's several times where I'm doing these three-story stucco homes and mine looks freshly patched and painted and everything looks perfectly fine, right? But there's been no really major repairs done, it's just been painted. So you wanna look at your neighbor's homes and that will help tell the story because that the same builder over here probably built that one compared to this one. So there's a lot going on on this home and it's been repaired and I can't, I think I made a video of this one, I just can't remember. So go back and look at my previous video on this one. All right, thanks for checking us out and uh, please don't forget, hit that like and subscribe button. I hope that stucco stuff helped you and then also understand that home inspections as a home inspector you're not just a home inspector you do all kinds of stuff you do marketing business accounting and then of course home maintenance projects just to keep the business running and keep the clients happy so that's again Chris with a action please hit that like and subscribe button and follow us on the next one see you guys bye